Hey guys, continuing our current trajectory on learning HTML elements, we are going to start looking at containers. Now in HTML, we have several containers and the one that we're going to focus on today is the div. So using my index page, I'm just going to scroll all the way down, use another horizontal rule. As we know, we're using this one page to do some of our experimentation. And then I'm going to put in another header tag. And then this one is going to be divs. So, or well, let me say containers, because I'm going to look at divs and I'm going to look at the span tag, all right? So we have divs and we have span, all right? So containers. Now let's actually start with the span because that one is far easier to explain. So I'm just going to write my angle bracket, put in a span tag, and then I'm going to say this is a span container. Now usually the span is used as a very unintrusive container. It just fits in almost anywhere. It doesn't take up much space. The only space it takes up is the space that is required for the content in it. That being said, you could have a span tag with a p tag it's never well it's rarely ever used with a p tag inside of it so this is a p tag and pretty much any other um tag or set of tags that you could have could go in a span but then it's used rather sparingly and it's usually used to insert like text somewhere that you don't want it to take up much space as we saw that the p tag is going to create like a little margin at the top margin at the bottom kind of spacing it out well the span is going to take up none of that space it's just going to put the text on the page and that's it all right so let's just go into live preview and see exactly how that looks. So I'll just right click, go to live server. Now a quick way to debug your page and see exactly what's happening. And down here we have our containers and we have the span container and we have our P tag, right? So a nice way to see exactly what is, you know, the space that each element is taking up on your page. If you're using a browser like Google Chrome, I think Edge has it also, Opera, Firefox, most modern browsers have this feature where you can right click and go to inspect. It may say inspect, it may say inspect element, but then when you click that, it will actually lead you to the code that is being rendered on the page. So I can actually drill down into the HTML document. I can just expand and I can go down to the span. And when I hover over the container, it will show you exactly what the space is. So let's look at the H2 tag. You can see the H2 tag, the blue area is from left to right, all the space it requires, right? And then the orange areas at the top and the bottom, that's the, the spacing, the margin that I mentioned that header tags kind of create for themselves. If I look back at one of the P tags, I believe this was a P tag, I can right click, click inspect and it will just highlight the code and I can see once again the blue area left to right that's how much space it requires going right across the page but the orange at the top and the bottom that's the amount of space that the p tag puts in between the, the nearest element at the top and the nearest element at the bottom all right so let's look at the span when I click the span and scroll down and hover over the span, you notice that the blue area is just the space it needs, right? So the other ones take up the entire row from left to right, whereas the span really just uses up the basic area that it requires, all right? And then if I expand this span, you'll see the P tag in it taking up all of that space. So that is how the span container looks. Now the next container that we're going to look at is the div. So I'm going to open up and do a div tag. So div really is short for maybe divider. It has no special meaning. That's what Visual Studio Code is saying. But the fact is that it is probably the most commonly used and the most popular container tag in HTML. So the div is actually capable of storing every and any tag possible. Well, every tag except the body, the HTML, and the head tags, because we already established that these are the skeleton tags. However, anything that renders content to your page can go inside of the div, and it's not limited to any specific number. So let's try something. Let's say h2 tag, or let's use h3 since we've used h2 all the time, and this is a heading in a div. All right, and then I'm going to put a p tag underneath that, and I'm going to say this is a 
p tag in a div. All right, and then let's put a span. So even the span can go inside of the div. This is a span inside a div. All right. So when we do all of that and we save, or if we're using live server, we can just relaunch the window and look back at the changes. Then you can see now that we have this entire box. So that's what the div does. It creates an entire box. And then everything that we put inside of that div tag goes inside of the box. So the box is always going to take up as much space from the left to the right, but then it's always going to expand vertically for any content that needs to go in there. All right. Now you're probably wondering, okay, so what is so special about the div? Why do I need a div? Well, the thing is that the div acts like a parent in this situation. So everything that you put inside of this div, it's now a child of this div. So if I move the div to the left, all the content moves to the left. If I move it to the right, if I make it small, all the content inside the div is going to be, their att attributes are then relative to whatever I'm doing to the div, right? So let's say I wanted this entire div to have a different background color. So far, the whole page is just white and seemingly boring, but then I want this div to have, you know, a different color than white. So back in my code, I can actually using my style attributes, which allows me to inject CSS in, I can say style is equal to, and I want to change the background color. So my selector is background dash color. And then Visual Studio Code is making suggestions as to all sorts of colors that are available. And if you want a specific shade that you don't see here listed, then you can use your hexadecimal or RGB, but don't worry about those right now. I'll get into what those are, but right now we'll just use one of these basic colors. So I'll just choose aqua. And then when we look back at our live preview, you see that this entire area that we highlighted to be the div now has a, an aqua background. All right. So a little more about divs. Divs are actually the more modern way to set up layouts on your page, all right? So the typical website really has like the top part, which has a nav bar. It has a section for content, and then it maybe has a footer. And just by example, I'm going to navigate to my website and show you a potential layout. All right, so this is my website, trevorwilliams.github.io. It's, you know, it's easy to get to. And it is literally just HTML. There's nothing special here except I have a div to contain this top part. I gave it a background color of gray. I have another div for this section and I gave it a background color of white. I have another div. So each part where you can clearly see that it's a new section on the website, it is literally a div, all right? And then inside of this content area, I have a div for this um, tile, I have a div for that tile, and each course that you see listed here is in its own tile. All of these are partitioned by divs. Now, as you can see, I can put divs beside each other with a little space in between. And as you get more and more advanced with HTML and CSS, you will appreciate how you can do those things. But what I want you to visualize is the fact that using the divs, we can actually set up web page layouts and manage and manipulate the content within. So that was a quick introduction to divs. What we're going to be doing in the next video is actually setting up a website layout, and then we'll start looking at the purpose of the internal style sheet. So up until now, we've been using the CSS through the inline styles where we use the style attribute, and that works. We've seen it work, but then I'm going to show you why it's not the most efficient way to actually be styling your elements. So in the next video, we're going to create another page, and then we're going to actually define a website layout using divs so that we can partition it to say we have a navbar section where we have all the links to our other pages, and then we have a content section, and then we have a footer section, and then by extension, 
what I don't want is that our content is just going to be stretching left to right indefinitely. As you can see, like with the line, it just goes from the leftmost part of this page to the rightmost part of this page. We don't want that. So in modern web design, and let me just zoom out a bit, you see that the content actually has some space to the left and to the right, right? Deliberately, you can make it fill the entire space, but then there are ways to make your divs not take up the entire space from left to right. So we'll be looking at all of that in the next video.